Radio One Podcast. Radio One Podcast. Download them for free at bbc.co.uk slash Radio One. Now. The Scott Mills Daily. Now, uh, you know on unofficialmills.co.uk. Geek World. Geek World, as you call it, which yeah. is a, it's like a fan site for this show, which is very nice. Been it's a for fan a few site for you. Uh, well, hang on, it's a fan site for you. No, they like you as well. No. Anyway, I'm just looking on it. I don't right? want them to. Yes, you do. <laughs> don't be horrible. <laughs> I was just looking on it, right? Yeah. And um, they have forums on there. It's very good, where they talk about, you know, stuff on Radio 1 and stuff on this show. And Jono, who runs the site, I've mm. just seen this, He's turns out he's never seen a James Bond film in his life. Ever. Really? Is that possible? I think, he, I reckon Jono's, what, 19, 20 now? And he's got time to listen to this show and write down comments every day. So how can he not have seen one single James Bond film? How is that possible? Even me, with my limited knowledge of films, ha- have never see- uh, have, uh, have seen a few James Bond films. But they're on all the time. They're on every week, every day. There's always on somewhere, isn't there? So it yeah. used to be just Christmas, but now they're, they're on everywhere all the time. I see them all the time. Yeah. He'll have never seen Pussy Galore. he would have never seen Pussy Galore. He would never have seen um, For Your Eyes Only. I watched Casino Royale the other day. Have you seen that yet? No, I haven't seen it. Of course you haven't, it's recent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Give it another two or three years, you'll be on. I did see one film over the weekend. Yeah, go on. Snakes on a train. A plane. Not your train was your one. Snakes on a train was the one I recommended. Snakes on a plane. That's very good. It was very good, yeah. I was out about um, three years ago. I think there was something called Confessions of a Window Cleaner that I watched. Uh, That that was on uh, UKG2, I think, at the weekend. That was on. All right. Yeah, we should we should go on. It's good that I think it was made films. in the seventies. I, I don't know. Apparently, there's a few in a series. <laughs> Is that? Uh, yeah, there's confessions of series. Oh, but right. it was quite good. You're going to watch more of them, are you? I'd quite like to. Yeah. So that was on at the weekend. Uh, what else did I watch? Uh, there's another film I watched as well. What was it? Was it? Um, I watched Made in Manhattan again <laughs> just because I quite like it. Yeah. It's good. Anyway, so, uh, Jono, unofficialmills.co.uk. I love unofficial mills. Not being funny or anything, but oh. seriously, <laughs> get get a James Bond film in your life, because you're kind of missing out. We're well, not even missing out, you're just a bit weird, because like, everybody in the whole world has seen one apart from you, so sort that out. Radio One. Download them for free at bbc.co.uk slash Radio One. Radio One. For a lot of people you know, Chopper, this is their favourite part of our show. It's Flirt Divert. Let's find out uh, some of the randoms you met this weekend. First, we've got somebody with a bit of a confession to make. We played this one on Friday. Hi, Nicky. Um, it's Warwick. We met in the nightclub on the weekend. Just ringing just to say a slight confession. I'm not really a mechanic for the Williams Formula One team. I am um, I work in the tyre shop in town, but um, I'm still really keen to meet up with you. I still think you're really nice and I can definitely um, get you some discounts and stuff on tyres if, uh, if if we meet up so hopefully can you give me a call back cheers bye see if you make something up eventually at some point you're going to have to come clean aren't you but maybe girls like tyres as I said yeah. hi uh, you know I met you the other night I need to tell you I'm not actually Robbie Williams by the way you know I said I was Prince Harry I'm not now see what he's done he's taken the easy way out there he called her brilliant it's gone to answer phone i'll just leave a message saying how i made it all up but i will offer her some discount i can definitely um get you some discounts and stuff on tires if uh, if if we meet up is he paying her at this point only if we meet up i'll get you some discounts and tires there's well, words like for people like him yeah i can't take you to silverstone but i can take you to quick fit i can definitely um get you some discounts and stuff on tires if uh, if if we meet up brilliant thanks now, remember what we say about drinking a lot of alcohol? Uh, does it make you more attractive? Here is definite proof that yes, it really does. Jim, it's Dabo. I'm just, uh, I've been drinking since 10, so I'm just wondering where you are. I'm still in the toilet. I'm like, just wondering where you are. God, just, just pick up the phone, you know. I thought we going out for a drink, mate. Okay. Well, I'll find some other people. 
Now, if you're having a phone conversation in the toilet, right, especially a public one, yeah. do you not want to keep it as quiet as possible? Normally. It's like, Mo, I'm waiting for you in the toilet. Well, I've had many conversations in public toilets. And I've never said I'm waiting for you in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded my... like you really knew what you were talking uh, about. Eh? Right, scrub Normally, that. it takes you a while to get into a bit of character acting. Scrub that. But, but that was just like, bang. He's not very subtle, though, is he? He's still in the toilet, and I'm like, just wondering where you are. Now, there you are in the gents, like minding your own business. Remember, st some people get stage fright anyway, then you hear this. Jim! Hey, Stavo! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Jim! Hey, Stavo! I would definitely meet up with them though, wouldn't you? Because it's always brilliant when you turn up and they've been drinking since 10am and you haven't. Yeah. It is always I it love that. It was a great night, though. Really enjoy that when that happens. Okay. Well, I'll find some other people. Cheers, Barwin. Yeah. Get a little bit leery, don't they? Boring always helps. But it is okay, because the police have come to get it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll find some other people. <laughs> Cheers, Barwin. Right, and uh, next guy on Flood Divert. Check him out. Hello, puppy. Hope you enjoyed our game of Tiddlywinks. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye. Did he say hello, puppy, or hello, puppy? Puppy, I think. Hello, puppy. Hello, puppy. It's just posh. Hello, Hello puppy. puppy. Is leaving a message for a dog? <laughs> yeah, and I, know, I know loads of dogs that can play tiddlywings. <laughs> but then, then how could a dog give him the flirt of number? Well, if it's clever enough to play tiddlywings. Mm. Hope you enjoyed our game of tiddlywings. Unless it was written on the dog's collar, one of those like lost and found things, right? So he finds a dog, has a game of tiddlywings with it, and finds the number, gives the number a call. Are we sure that playing tiddlywings is playing tiddlywings and not something else? Hope you enjoyed our game of tiddlywings. Tell you what, though, you'd be gutted if an animal would give you Fleur de Vert number, wouldn't you? <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> I've been given the Fleur de Vert number by an owl. Have you? No, I'm just saying. Was that whilst you were talking to it in the toilet? <laughs> Right, check this. Just fly in through the window. <laughs> <laughs> check this guy out. All right, baby. Yeah. Um, I rang this number you gave me in loads of times, and it's always on out of phone. Um, just from when we went out on Monday, I thought it was good, and you know, definitely want to meet up again. I told you it would be Paul Daniel with a bit of magic, didn't I? And uh, it was, wasn't it? What do you think? Uh, anyway, drop me a text. You know me, Keith Baker, video maker. See you later, babe. Yep, that's right. You heard him right there, that was Keith Baker, video maker. You know me, Keith Baker, video maker. So before he met this girl that gave him Flirt Divert, he told her the date would be Paul Daniels, a bit magic. I told you it would be Paul Daniels with a bit of magic, didn't I? And, uh, it was, wasn't it? No, actually, not according to her. That wasn't his catchphrase, though, was it? What? A bit of magic. Yeah. His catchphrase was, not a lot. Yeah. I don't think she liked the date. Not a lot. <laughs> Insert your own Paul Daniels joke, if you like. <laughs> Maybe it was a bit too Paul Daniels the date, and he ended up sawing her in half. Radio 1 Podcast. Podcast. Hello! Hello! Who's that? It's Rob from Dagenham. Hi, Rob from Dagenham. How can I help you? Well, I haven't seen any of them films either. What haven't no you seen? Bond, I haven't seen Mary Poppins, Harry Potter, James Bond. I've seen my first Carry On film last week, though. Last week? Last week. Yeah, Carry On Camping. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, well, she, well, yeah, it's all right, I suppose. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? That's the one where a top pops well, off. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's it. Babs's uh, Babs come out. Yeah, yeah Babs is Babs. Babs is Babs. <laughs> but no Bond, no Harry Potter, no Grease, or Mary Poppings, as you no. put on your text. No. Oh, that's fair enough. How old are you? 27. Yeah, exactly. It's all fine. Right, there's another girl that's been on. I've never seen Dirty Dancing, and I'm a girl. Uh, you should see other girls' faces when I tell them. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Not seeing Dirty Dancing, yeah, you're a girl. You're a girl, that's a bit yeah. Weird. Very wrong. That's very strange. Um, uh, this one from Ian and Sterling. Brilliant. Let's boast about being pig ignorant. What next? Boast about never reading books? Hey? I haven't read a book, have you? What are they? I've read Heat. <laughs> yeah, that's Sometimes re read Reveal when that comes out. I love it as well. There's not much point, Isn't really. It? Love it? Is love it's called? good, yeah. That's what you like. With books, see, there's not much point because uh, all the good ones get made into films eventually anyway. Yeah. Which then right. we don't watch. Yeah. <laughs> Until about three years later. Yeah. I'm joking, everybody. Of course I've read a book. <laughs> Don't, don't have the book with pictures. Off. Don't Fred Sharon Osbourne Survivor. <laughs> <laughs>
podcast. podcast. Really does sound like Ricky Gervais, that, doesn't it? You know me, Keith Baker, video maker. I doubt Ricky Gervais goes around posing as Keith Baker, video maker. Is, no. Surely the better chat up line would be, hello, I'm multi-millionaire comedian, actor and writer Ricky Gervais. Maybe, That'd be a bit better. Maybe you got the numbers in his phone mixed up and he's meant to be ringing Newsbeat. <laughs> Radio 1. This is a podcast from BBC Radio 1. Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, who are you? I'm Nick. How can I help you, Nick? Oh, I've just, uh, I've, I've just uh, listened to the radio and I used to say now that about the chocolate and stuff or whatever it was and... Uh, People I've that haven't eaten pasta. stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've never tried pasta. My mum doesn't like it. She told me from a little kid it's a devil's food because it made her sick or something and... <laughs> I she told you. Vomited. She told you pasta is the devil's food. It's the devil's food. What? See, your mum was like <laughs> pasta. It's food of the devil. <laughs> did she actually say that to you? Yeah, she did. It was uh, with all the uh, background noise and everything. Yeah. Yeah. She just had thunderbolts on tap, didn't yeah. she? <laughs> Your mum was just talking to you, this music came on. <laughs> yeah, I think she's the devil more than anything. You what? I think she's the devil more than anything. Right, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm 26, nearly 27. Right, uh, okay. Have, have you not been tempted to try it since, you know? No, never, never, no, not at all. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah. There are all sorts of varieties. <laughs> you can get tagliatelle, can't you? Penne. Penne. Spaghetti. Uh, I'll the spaghetti, yeah. Or we could go on for oh. Fusilisi. Fu <laughs> Fusilisi. Have I just made that up? I think you made that <laughs> up. I don't think that's a pasta. <laughs> you, just, you can make up anything, he wouldn't know anyway. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've just never even felt really like trying it because, you know, I think it's just one of those things, is it? It's yeah, I'll never catch style. on. Yeah. Do you have pizza? Yeah. Pizza? Uh, yeah, I'll eat pizza. All right. How many times? Pizza? Probably twice a month or something like that. Oh, right. So pizza's on, pasta's off. Pasta's off, proper P off. Pizza is the angel's food. <laughs> <Yeah>. right, <isn't laughs> I know that's what my belly thinks. <laughs> also, I can tell that you've never tried pasta because you can't actually spell it on your text. <laughs> P A S T E R. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how you spell pasta. Scott Mills. Scott Mills. Radio 1. The Scott Mills Daily. Got an email from Jamie who lives in Warrington, right? Yeah. He says, Scott, love the show. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Does not say that. Um, he wants to ask his girlfriend to marry him. Okay. Right? It's been three years now. He's not bored. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to do one of those terrible marriage proposals on air. <laughs> I don't think that would work. Oh, no, don't like them. No. Yeah. Right, Jamie wants to know, I've no idea why he's asking me, do you still have to ask her dad if it's okay first? But, uh, no, I've never asked a girl I to marry me. I, no, oh, well, or her father. So here's marriage expert. You've never asked a girl's father to marry you. No. <laughs> here's uh, marriage expert Shepherd. I don't know. I'm, I'm handing this over to you. You're, You're married. You class me as a marriage expert. Well, I don't so know. You. Do people still do that or what? Uh, do you have to ask her dad? I, I don't. I don't think so. No. Right. What if, if he says no? What happens then? What if he says what? yes and then she says no? That's worse. <laughs> That's why I just think more, the more people involved, the more complicated I it agree. gets. Cut out the middleman. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, don't need no. to worry about that. Although think? I've I've never heard of a dad saying no. I, I mean, maybe we honest. could open this up a bit, like on the text. Do, do you still have to ask the dad first? I don't know. I'd love to know if a dad has said no. Actually, I think dads are most happy just to get them off their hands. Actually, I do remember recently on MTV uh, an episode of uh, <laughs> oh, this will be good of Totally Scott Lee, <laughs> where um, mm. he went round to Michelle Heaton's house beforehand right. to ask her dad. So maybe you do have to. Well, if it was on totally, their example, if it was only on Totally Scott Lee, that must be how the world works. <laughs> yeah. My main bit of advice for for a wedding is don't forget the video camera because when uh, when Auntie Doris, you know, when she's on the dance floor. <laughs> And her teeth fall out. You can get two hundred and fifty quid <laughs> after you've been framed. Do you think there's people that do like a bit like wedding crashes? They just go round weddings with a video camera, waiting for the <laughs> the gust of wind to send the bride's dress overhead. Oh, I got one. Two hundred and fifty quid. There we are. <laughs> you think? Uh, in answer, Jamie, I don't. Well, I don't know, but I, I would say don't b don't do don't it. Don't bother. Don't bother. It's all fine. It makes it complicated. Radio One podcast. Download them for free at bbc.co.uk slash radio one. Radio One. Oh yes, all new flirt divert on Radio One. You met quite a lot of people at the weekend, didn't you? Hmm. I've got a lesson in love for you right now. Okay, oh. if you've not had a girl or a boyfriend for a while. Here 
is how to get one. I'm listening. Just because this bloke got on Flirt Divert, right, and got given the number, don't let that put you off. This is how you do it. All right, you ready? Here's a lesson in love. All right, Flower. How are you? We should uh, meet up, you know. Wow. Wow. That's how you do it. Ugh. Right, so not only does he finish the call with a kiss, wow. he also snaps his fingers. That's the way they like it. We should uh, meet up, you know. Yeah, you see, it wouldn't. Is that him snapping his fingers, eh? We should uh, meet up, you know. Yep. Wouldn't matter what he looks like, if he was funny, some people have just got it, haven't they? Like he's, him. he's just smooth. We should, uh, meet up, you know. What celebrities do you think would do that? I think Gok Wan would do that. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do a bit. We what? should, uh, meet up, you know. <laughs> him and Trevor McDonald. <laughs> I reckon he snaps his fingers as well. Dale Winton, I would say. Do you reckon? Yeah. Uh, always look, you know, sharp, smooth. Yeah. I don't know why I think Trevor McDonald would do it, I just do. We should, uh, meet up, you know. Have you not sat there watching the all new look news at ten thinking, I bet he snaps his fingers? No, I haven't really, no. Right. I've sat there watching the all look... All That's look. the news tonight. Good night. <laughs> now, as well as the snapping the fingers, right, you do need a good chat-up line. Yeah. And here it is. All right, love, it's, um, I'll make you in town the other night. If you don't remember me, I said as you come in the club, remember, you fell over and you fell from the skies into my eyes, remember? Alright, um, this is my number anyway, so give a text back, alright, and we'll go for a drink or something. Alright, bye. Alright. That's, That's a good one. You fell from the skies into my eyes. What was she on? Scaffolding? Remember, you fell over, and you fell from the skies into my eyes, remember? I, I hate it when someone falls from the skies into your eyes, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> it's that horrible. Could've... hate that. Seriously, maybe she was on a balcony and he was on the dance floor. Well, the thing is, she fell over, right? So I think she was too worse for wear to realise his chat line makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Remember, you fell over. And you fell from the skies into my eyes. Remember? However, she did still manage to give him Flirt Divert number, so she was, wasn't that. If you'd have had a video camera, you could have got that on You've Been Framed. <laughs> Someone falling from the skies into your eyes, that's got to be worth I, I 250 would, quid. I would have laughed and laughed and laughed. I would. That. Now, once you've chatted her up with your fingers and your chat up line, you are going to need somewhere to take her. And yeah. this guy has got it. Hello, Becky. It's Bazza from the other night. I just called. To say I love you. Uh, I just want to say thanks for last weekend. I just want to wonder if you want to do it again. Uh, my nan's out of town this week, so we got the chalet to ourselves. Just give me a ring back. Bye. All right, so I'll let you have the, the singing was rubbish. But how could you turn down that offer his, his of his nan's chalet? <laughs> I mean. My nan's out of town this week, so we got the chalet to ourselves. Can I ask you, who lives in the chalet? I, is does, he, he, does his nan live in a, permanently in a holiday camp? He do, or, or Switzerland. He doesn't, or sound, Switzerland. he doesn't sound Swiss, does he? My nan's out of town this week, so we got the chalet to ourselves. I think he might be Welsh. Maybe he's just, just a hunch. Maybe he's just trying to make his nan's bungalow sound glamorous <laughs> by giving it a foreign pronunciation. Think about it, though. When I'm quite old, I'd quite like to live at Butlin, doesn't it? Would you? All that entertainment on your doorstep. <laughs> you, you'll probably be playing it. <laughs> and then I'll just go back to the chalet. You just go back to your chalet. How brilliant that'd be. Add a bit of money, back to the chalet. <laughs> now, this is complicated. I've got no idea what this is about at all. Uh, should we try and work this out together? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is like... This is like CSI Flirt de Are you ready? <laughs> right. Actually, I prefer the Miami one, to be honest. So let's have that instead. That's it. CSI in Miami, you flipped a bit. You've got no idea what I'm about, have you? I have no idea, no. Right. I don't watch CSI. Lots of people do. Okay, let's try and work this out, okay? Well, it's good, this. I prefer CSI Miami as well. Hi, Charlie. It's, um, it's Rick. Uh, <coughs> I have been thinking about what happened and what you did and uh, it's... It's not on. I mean, my brother doesn't think it's right, and, you know, I enjoyed it at the time, but, you know, it's, I don't know, really. I mean, I've been thinking about it, and the stain on the carpet won't come out, and the flat absolutely stinks, and I, and it's just, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if, if, if we really should see each other again. I, You know, I liked you, but you did that, and it's just, well... 
it was a bit, bit nasty, wasn't it? OK, give me a phone. Cheers, bye. OK, so... Let's look at the evidence here. Exhibit one. I don't know if, if, if we really should see each other again. OK, so obviously something bad has happened. Yes. <laughs> Exhibit two. I mean, my brother doesn't think it's right. OK, his brother was... Right, doesn't think it's right. So is his brother there at the scene? Hang on, I've got to get the Miami oh, music right. back on. It's finished. OK. Right. Right, so yeah, his brother. Hmm, what could that be? OK. All right, you building up the clues? Yeah, oh, I am, yes. You know, I enjoyed it at the time, but... Right, so something that you enjoyed at the time, but regrets yeah. after, that your brother doesn't like. Okay. Right. Next one. The stain on the carpet won't come out. Right, so it's something that your brother doesn't like, that you regret after, which involves a stain on the carpet. Yeah. Okay. The flat absolutely stinks. And the flat stinks. What happened there, CSI? Flat divert. Was it yeah. a cheese fondue that went wrong? Radio 1 Podcasts. Radio 1 Podcasts. 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 Hello. Hiya, Scott. Hiya, who's that? It's Kat here from Belfast. Kat from Belfast, what are you saying? I said, if, if a guy didn't ask my dad for permission, I just wouldn't marry him. You wouldn't marry somebody if they didn't ask your dad first? Yeah, a lot of the girls are saying the same. You have to ask. You have to ask the dad, dad first, otherwise it doesn't work. What? So it's like, will you marry me? Have you asked my dad? No. Okay, I'm not going to. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Don't you think it's like a lot of hassle? Do you know what I mean? It's not, though. It's, it's one little question. If they're, they're going to go through the bother of asking me to marry them, they've got to ask my dad first. Would your dad agree? Depends on who it was, of course. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. It's nerve wracking to ask once, <laughs> let alone have to ask twice. If your dad asked to marry me, then no, I don't think he'd say yeah. But if your dad said no, I'm afraid not, then you wouldn't marry them. No. Nope. Okay. Because they're going to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad first. Yeah. Because they don't want to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad first. Yeah. Because they don't want to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad first. Yeah. Because they don't want to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad first. Yeah. Because they don't want to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad first. Yeah. Because they don't want to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad first. Yeah. Because they don't want to go through the bother of asking me to marry them. They're going to have to ask their dad so they, they, they bring in some kind of psychic people, isn't it? Oh, yeah, a profile yeah. or something. Right. Uh, we've got Dave from Bristol on the phone now. Uh, you might remember Dave from a few weeks back. We found his number. He was on our show a while ago, and he wanted to start his own detective agency because he found out he was quite good at Cluedo. Mm. Hi, Dave. Hi, Scott. You right? right? How's the uh, agency going? Um, not bad. Um, obviously, due to my limited training, I can, I've, I'm can i only solving murders in, like, stately mansions and homes at the mm. moment. Mm. But... Um, yeah, yeah, it's going all right. Good. Okay. Right, we need you to help us out with this, all right? Right, yeah. Okay, right, so here are the clues, okay? What was going on here? Uh, Chapel thinks it's some kind of cheese-related party. A cheese fondue <laughs> party. Okay, right, okay. okay. I don't know if, if, if we really should see each other again. Right, so he thinks they shouldn't see each other again, okay? It's a bloke talking to a girl. I'm flirting about. all right? Okay, yeah. I mean, my brother doesn't think it's right. Brother doesn't think it's right at all. Yeah? Okay. Got it? Yeah. You know, I enjoyed it at the time, but... So... Brother doesn't think it's right at all, but he did enjoy it at the time. The stain on the carpet won't come out. There's a stain on the carpet, all right? Yeah. The flat absolutely stinks. And the flat <laughs> absolutely stinks. Tell the radio now. Yeah, sorry, it was a news interruption here. Come okay, on. flat stinks. What is it? Um, it's, it's a tough one, definitely. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, my, my limited training in Cluedo, the only kind of liquid uh, is the poison. Um, yes. Mm. It, so that that would be my first detective. Obviously, we need to get some kind of forensics to, down there to have a look yeah. at. Do you think sort of, we need to bring in Colonel Mustard for questioning? <laughs> Colonel Mustard, I, 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 no, this is a bit out of Colonel Mustard's expertise. Oh, is I it? Think, right. I think I think it's more of a Reverend Green sort of thing, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I also the, the think Miss Scarlet might be involved. Yeah, in that. yeah. That's what, the thing is, the thing is, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Cluedo to bring out their like inner city edition so I can expand my business. Cluedo CSI. <laughs> then you'll yeah. be right there. Yeah, I know. Okay. Like it could be like you know instead of like the poison in the library and all that, it could be like the, the chat with the traffic cone in Tesco car park sort of thing. Yeah, I like that. Is, yeah, bring that, it right up to date, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Why not? I mean, so it, it is quite a hard one. Um, I, I, fondue, yeah, maybe. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's somebody else again. I think, I think, I think Chappers might be after my job, to be uh, fair. Right, so <laughs> ahead of you. After all that, you're still saying the fondue party. Um, well, no, because that one's already been said. I just, um... It, Dave, listen, not... don't worry about it. Radio 1 Podcast. Radio 1 Podcast.
Breakfast. That was the Scott Mills Daily. Why not try the best of Chris Moyles? Available now to download for free at bbc.co.uk slash radio one.